Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for joining us today for an update on the Republican primary race for U.S. Senate. But before we discuss the recount, I want to first acknowledge the terrible tragedy in Texas yesterday. Today is a somber day. Here in the Commonwealth, our hearts are with the victims, their families, and the entire community of Uvalde. Now on today's announcement about the recount in the United States Senate race. Today, all 67 counties have reported their unofficial returns for the May 17th primary election to the Department of State. In the Republican primary race for U.S. Senate, the top two vote getters are Mehmet C. Oz with 419,365 votes and David H. McCormick with 418,463 votes. The 902 vote difference between these two candidates is within the one half of 1% margin that triggers a mandatory recount under state law. As of noon today, Mr. McCormick has not waived his right to a recount. So as acting Secretary of State, I'm required by the election code to order all county boards of elections to conduct a recount of the race. I will issue the formal declaration of the recount tomorrow by the deadline of 5 p.m. Counties may begin their recount as early as Friday, May 27th, but must begin no later than June 1st. They must complete the recount by noon on June 7th and submit the recount results to the Department of State by noon on June 8th. As an aside, the results of all other races which are not subject to a recount will be certified on June 6. In response to the Migliori Third Circuit judgment released on Friday, the Department of State issued guidance to all 67 counties to segregate, canvas, and tabulate undated and incorrectly dated ballots. Our position is that undated and incorrectly ballot, dated ballots should count. To be clear, our guidance will enable counties to arrive at an accurate count no matter what the courts decide. The most recent undated ballot counts with 65 out of 67 counties reporting are Republican 860 and Democratic 4,190. To give you some historical perspective on recounts, this will be the seventh time the automatic recount provision under Act 97 of 2004 has been triggered. There have been three recounts in November 2009 in a Superior Court race, in May 2011 in the Democratic primary contest for a seat in the Commonwealth Court, and the last time, six months ago, in November 2021, in the Commonwealth Court race for two open seats. None of those recounts changed the result of the election. The other three occasions when recounts were triggered, candidates waived their right to a recount. In the 2010 Democratic primary race for lieutenant governor, in the 2017 Superior Court race, and in the 2019 race for two open seats on the Superior Court. In terms of the recount itself, the election code spells out the process, which is designed to ensure every vote is accurately counted and no eligible voter is disenfranchised. The recount will be conducted transparently as dictated by law. The affected candidates or their attorney representatives are entitled to be present and observe the proceedings. To ensure accuracy, the law requires that County Board of Elections recount all ballots using a different device than the initial tabulation, or they can recount by hand. The department stands ready to assist counties and answer any questions they may have as they navigate this important process. I want to express my appreciation to county election officials in advance for all the hard work they will be undertaking this recount. These election professionals work diligently leading up to and during the primary election itself. 
They have worked hard over the last week to count all eligible votes and provide the department with their unofficial results. And finally, I want to emphasize that this automatic recount is intended to ensure that the count is accurate and that there is confidence in the results and outcome. I know Pennsylvanians and indeed people throughout the country have been following this race attentively and are eagerly awaiting the results. I thank everyone for their patience as we count every vote. As the Commonwealth's chief election official, I'm always pleased to see voters engaged in our democratic process. So thank you, and I'll answer a few questions about the recount. Yes, sir, what's your name and where are you from? Sure, my name is Brian Yenis. I'm a national correspondent for the Fox News Channel. Okay. Um, my question for you is two parts. Um, do you expect the counties to make their own decisions as to what to do with these undated ballots, even though you've given the guidance in all 67 counties decide if they want to count them or not? And my second question is, for a national audience, can you explain why it takes so long to count here in Pennsylvania, it seems, in these elections. Um, there's always seems to be confusion about why it takes so long. Sure, that's a very good question. Um, so we issued guidance, and we expect counties to follow that guidance with regard to undated ballots. It's our position that undated ballots and incorrectly, wrongly dated ballots should count. They're immaterial. Um, but, you know, there is current litigation that I cannot comment on, but our guidance with them segregating those ballots and tabulating them separately will assure that regardless of any outcome of litigation that you know we can actually have an accurate count. Um, to your second question um, about why it takes so long in Pennsylvania, um, I've been mentioning this in every interview I can. It's because in Pennsylvania, um, election officials aren't able to pre-canvas ballots until 7 a.m. on election day. So that means they can't even start opening them you know, separating them from the inner envelope or processing them at all. And of course, election day is a busy day. Um, we have 67 counties, you know, voters are voting in person. And so we are asking and the counties are asking, it's a bipartisan request um, for there to be at least be two weeks of, of um, time for election officials to pre-canvas and pre-process those ballots to put less strain on them for on election day and the days following. So we will be in line with states like Florida, for instance, that have um, at least three weeks in Florida. They have three weeks to count uh, pre-process those ballots, and that's why they're able to call election results on election night. And it's something that we all want, you know, and I think that will really help voters have more confidence in our elections. Yes. Hi, Secretary Mark Levy from AP. Um, did you say that there's 800 undated ballots cast by Republicans? So we have 65 out of the 67 counties have reported how many undated ballots that they have. And out of that, there are 860 Republican undated ballots and 4,190 Democratic ballots. Do you have any idea how many other ballots were still being counted by counties or have yet to be counted, like did they overseas, military and provisionals um, after Tuesday's deadline? I don't have a full number, but I know that there are, are, are few. Deputy Secretary Marks, do you? Have hey, a sense. Um, oh, come, come up here. And speak in the Absentee ballots, I believe, was um, right around 4,000 um, statewide, and that includes Democratic ballots and Republican ballots. And there were some provisional ballots. Um, the provisional ballot number, it was a little larger, I think around uh, 6,000. The, the grand total was um, a little below 10,000 between provisional ballots and absentee ballots that are still being adjudicated. And those would include military and overseas ballots, which counties could not canvas until today. Um, so, uh, you know, talking, you know, going back to your question um, from Fox News, you know, we, we have a process in place and ballots can come up from, come in up to seven days after the election for military and overseas voters, and they can't be um, tabulated until the following day. Thank you. Okay, you had a question. Yeah, my, my question was basically okay. Mark's. Um, well, what's but, your name and where are you? Oh, Charlie Thompson with the Patriot News. Okay. Um, but um, is it possible to get a breakdown of, of how many are regular mail-in and absentee ballots and how many are military and civilian overseas? Yeah, um, if you follow up with our office, we can give you a breakdown. 
Okay. And then I, I just have one other question. Um, one, one thing, uh, I, I was wondering for reporters and the public who we ultimately try to serve through our coverage, why, why wasn't the department able to do a better job this time of, of keeping a running tally of how many votes were remain, re, remained to be counted? Because um, I remember in 2020, there was um, a dashboard that actually tracked how many mail-in ballots had been processed and how many had yet to be processed. And, and um, there was nothing like that this time. Is there, is there any explanation for, you know, what, why it was hard to get information about how many ballots were still outstanding? Well, we have our election returns website. You know, we're constantly communicating with the counties, um, and we will be we'll have that for the general election, but you know, not for the primary. Next question. Uh, yes. Dennis Owens, ABC 27 in Harrisburg. Two part question. So, did you just say there's still 10,000 ballots potentially in play that aren't counted off on top of the numbers you presented to us? Is that accurate? Uh, yes, that's that's accurate. There's, those are ballot, ballots that were still being adjudicated. And, and again, significant portion of the absentee ballots are military and overseas civilian ballots that could not be canvassed until today. Uh, the remainder, uh, roughly 6,000 ballots, were provisional ballots that were still being adjudicated by the county boards of elections. The expectation is that today or within the next couple of days, the board will be taking votes on which of those ballots will count, which will partially count. And again, that's all part of the process. It's not unusual for there to be thousands of ballots. Ten years ago, in 2011, there were several thousand ballots a week after the election. Um, and it's more a function of, of Pennsylvania law and the schedule than it is anything else. And then my, my second question is, tell, tell me about what the role of the courts that you're anticipating, in, in theory, counting what you've got is actually going to be part of the easy part. The courts could play a role in this. They already are. There's people suing on all, all sides. And mm -hmm. ultimately, the U.S. Supreme Court could weigh in. You've got a federal ruling that says you should count the mail as that's what you're following. you got state law and the state Supreme Court ruling that says you shouldn't. What's the role of the courts and what have you anticipated is going to be the role of the courts in this? You know, unfortunately, I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't tell you that, but there is federal lit litigation around undated ballots. There's state litigation, and we will follow that, and we'll give guidance to the counties as needed. Yes. Uh, do you have a breakdown of how many of these provisional and overseas ballots are Democrat versus Republican? Not off the top of my head, but we can follow up with you with that information if you talk to our... Yes. That was kind of what I was going to say, okay. the 10,000 ballots, and will that... Those results come in before recount takes place. They'll come in during, right? I'm sorry, not Barbara. I mean, WGA. recount. the recount timeline is starting on Friday, and it's a week, right? So it goes from Friday to, well, June 7th, so a little bit over a week. Um, as far as that's concerned, yeah, can, go ahead. I can answer, I think, with um, some. So the, the uh, provisional ballots, so a lot of, there's a lot going on today in counties. Not only are they canvassing military and overseas ballots, they're also meeting about provisional ballots. So we expect that counties will finish their initial computation before they start the recount, if that's, if that's your question. Uh, and to answer the other question, provisional ballots are, are unique in that, especially in a primary, some of those provisional ballots were, were likely cast because somebody thought they were registered in one party and we're not, uh, according to the county's record. So it's, it's difficult to get an exact number of how many are Republican and how many are Democrat until the counties actually adjudicate them and open those ballots. But in a race this tight, excuse me, it, that's a fair number, close to 10,000. Um, just a follow-up question. Uh, you, you talk about how counties have to use a different means of counting mm -hmm. in, in a recount. Uh, what, what would that be? Uh, normally, they're using electronics, uh, you know, machines. Uh, what, what are the, the choices available? Sure. So they could either hand count or they could use a different device. So, um, you know, if they scan the ballots on a precinct scanner, they could use a central scanner or vice versa. Let's take two more questions. Okay. I'm Ford Turner from Morning Call. I can Secretary, in our part of the state, in the Lehigh Valley, we have two state Senate races that are still very close and undecided, right. one on the 14th, one on the 16th, one Democrat, one Republican. And this morning, 
if you would look at three different sources of data, you would see three different vote counts. One being two counties' websites. Each district is made of two counties. You add them up, you get a number. Uh, one being the Department of State website, and the third being our own morning call website, which uses a fee from AP. So you have the public wanting to know what's going on in these two important races, having available three different sets of numbers. But my question is, is that a scenario that's undesirable and can it be avoided? Is there something the department can do to unify the counts that are available to the public? You know, um, that's a good question. I mean, we received unofficial results from all 67 counties, but those results will you know, could potentially change based on what Deputy Secretary Mark said with military and overseas ballots, provisional ballots, um, those mail-in ballots that are still being adjudicated, so that number could shift potentially. But, you know, the main thing is the certification deadline is June 6th, so by that date, that's the official count um, for those state legislative races. So expect to get a firm number on June 6th as far as those official numbers and counts. Certification One more. Follow up the certification by the county elections. Board. Yeah, certification by the Department of State is June 6. Okay. Yes. Um, one more question. You already asked. Anyone else? Okay, just you. Go ahead. <laughs> How much do you expect this to cost taxpayers? I know that there was a number thrown out there by some of the campaigns. I just want to get the official cost. Right. And also, in terms of timing, based on the history of these recounts. What can we expect in terms of how long we think this recount could could let could you know in terms of days? Are we talking about closer to the deadline, or, or could this be done right after World Day weekend? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Really good question. So the cost that we're estimating is over one million dollars, um, and that could fluctuate anywhere from 1.1 to higher, depending um, of taxpayer dollars. Um, and as far as timing, you know we are. Um, the official recount will start, counties can start as soon as Friday. They have to be finished, they can't start later than January, or sorry, June 1st, and they have to be completed by June 7th. So smaller counties, as you can imagine, might have that recount done pretty quickly. Larger counties might take longer, and it's really up to the county to decide what method of um, of recount they're using if it's hand or if they're using another device and you can imagine hand might take a little bit longer because they need to actually have more um, bodies to help do that so um, there's a lot of different factors from size of the county to how many resources they have on hand but if counties are able they can start as soon as Friday I was gonna say some of these counties I imagine start with their best and quickest accounting equipment so now they have to use something different it's you can probably put two two together and realize that some of these people are going to have to, they're going to take longer to recount, perhaps, right? Perhaps, but the deadline is um, June 7th. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time today, um, and we will keep you updated if there's any new developments.